so this is using law of sine and law of cosines. Now I've got them set up here so that you can already see the two laws. Generally you use law of sines if there's more angles than sides, and you use law of cosines if there's more sides than angles. Now when before we start to do this, we've got to label it up, and capital letters go on the angles, and lowercase go across from them on the side lengths. It doesn't matter where they go so long as like big C and little c are across from each other, big A, little a are across from each other. So I have A and B here. So what I can do is I can say that A over sine of big A or of 32 is equal to little b or 20 over sine of 16. Now we can cross multiply divide. So if we simplify this out, I get that A is 20 sine 32 over sine 16, which comes down if you simplify everything, 20 sine 32 over sine 16 gives us 38.4, roughly. So that says that this side length is 38.4. And then you're going to do something very similar Use the 20 over sine 16 ratio. If this angle is 32, this angle is 16. We know all of them must add up to be 180. So if we subtract everything out, we get that this angle is 132 degrees. And so we can use the same ratio to find little c. Now the law of cosines is going to work up similarly, except for this one we want to be a little bit careful. I have little a, little b and I want big C. So I want to put big C here and little c here and then big A, little a, big B, little b. It doesn't really make a difference but I want this to match this formula. So I know that C squared is little a squared or 15 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 15 times 12 cosine of the angle. That's the 7 over there. So 15 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 15 times 12 cosine 57. And then take the square root of all of that. So I get that C is about 13.15. Now from there, you can use either law of sines because now we have an angle side ratio and we have all the other sides. Or you can keep using law of cosines and kind of spinning your way around this circle to get all the pieces.